Cool, let me get it started. Yeah, thank you for the dentist today. And here we have new location, we're actually in San Jose. And we, we have like a, a large audience on the um, uh, in person audience and also uh, audience online. So today's topic will be focused on each tab. And we have two awesome speakers today. We have Adam here and Gim. And I is Pincap's co-founder CEO, and Gim is Pincap's uh, principal's uh, product manager. And Ad will talk about the evolution of TagDB and how TagDB uh, becomes an HTAP database. Yeah. And Gim will talk about uh, the real world HTAP examples focusing on single star and TagDB. And without further ado, I will hand over to Ad to talk about the evolution of TagDB. Okay. Hello, everyone. And uh, it's really glad to be here. And actually, um, Today, I just, 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 just said uh, I made a 100 page slice, and actually, I will try my best to you know, finish the, the whole talk in one hour, kind of like the mission possible. But uh, also, uh, I, I, uh, I, I would try, also try my best to keep, keep you guys awake because you know, it's a, it will be a very like, technical slice. Uh, yeah, I will try my best. And also today we have some uh, some new hire of Incap in, in this in this meeting room. So consider like a you know a new hire training session. <laughs> yes, it is because um, yeah I will share a lot of things about the history, the journey, uh, why the TIDB you know it will it even uh even uh, step by step until what it is today. So. Yeah, I will begin. So this is today's agenda. Uh, the first of all, I want to do a little bit just uh, uh, do the introduction about uh, what is Pinhead and uh, what's the time based positioning. And uh, the second part is the uh, like technical part. Uh, it is about how TIDB, uh the starting point of TIDB, we want to build a, just want to build a scalable or TV database. But today we claim ourselves is a real HTAP database. So, what's the journey? Uh, yeah. And uh, of course, the, the last but not, not the least, I will share a little bit about the future planning and if we have enough time. Okay. Okay, uh, a little bit about Pinkap. Um, Pinkap is a seven years old company. It is not uh, young, but I would say seven years. And uh, uh, we have more than 600 employees all over the world and across nine global office and also pickup is backed by some uh funded by some you know, top tier VCs uh, like Sequoia, ggv things like this so it's a global company and uh also the you know pickup is uh, the database company i would say we only have one product uh, which is tidb and uh which pickup uh, provides enterprise level support and also the managed cloud service on those AWS and GCP, and also in the future, we will have the uh, Microsoft Cloud support. <clears throat> okay, and uh, my personal base in the uh, Bay Area. Uh, so it's um, really, you know, I'm really glad to, you know, uh, open for a cup of coffee you, if you want to, you know, uh, meet me in person. Yeah, i based in the Bay Area. Actually, we have more than like uh, near 60 people uh, located in the US. Uh, most of them are engineers. So this is some of our uh, engineers in, in, in the US. <clears throat> okay, um, I just, just said TidyB, uh, and uh, TidyB is an open source project um, since day one. And uh, I would say it is getting more and more popular nowadays in the open source community. And this is the rank uh, of some, you know, more than popular database. Uh, it's a rank by the GitHub stars. And you can see in the last 10 years, and the TiDB is the rank number two in the, uh, in the popularity uh, in the open source community. <clears throat> okay. Um, can I ask a question? Yeah. So what do you call Pinkat? Oh, yeah, it's a question, <laughs> Pinkat. Um, CAP theorem, <laughs> have you heard the, the CAP, CAP theorem before? It is uh, like a theory in distributed system. Uh, C means, okay. yeah, the, the cap the, theory. Yeah, 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 cap theory, something like that. Yeah, the yeah. consistency, the partition tolerance, high availability, availability, right. uh, yeah, you mm -hmm. can get two. 
But you know, pin we, we connect C and A and P together. Yeah, that's like the okay. of engineering. Yeah. And uh, okay, uh, this is our marketing stuff. <laughs> I have to say, and uh, the positioning and uh, what is TidyB? What's the problem that TidyB really we are going to solve? Um, you know, um, some sometimes I I feel a little bit confusing or. Very confused about the modern database technology because in recent few years, like uh, ten years, we invented so many different databases. Uh, you know, like um, you know, back to thirty years ago, when we think about database, we only have Oracle or maybe uh, IBM DB2, and the, the world is so so yeah so simple. But nowadays we have dozens of maybe hundreds of thousands of database. Technology NoSQL, time series database, graph database. So, which, um, you know, in which scenario we should use which database? That would be a very confusing problem for you know a lot of people. And imagine that if you are you are going to build a startup, uh, building some you know creative application web service. So you, uh, you know, like uh, today, um, and the the. the in this start, something like the startup, the competition will be very uh, getting tougher and tougher. So the the requirement of the market or the uh, is is uh, is keep changing. So um, that's why, for example, the the data database I think is the some something that the uh, very critical decision making when you want to build your business. Okay. So uh, that's how I, I, I will share some, you know, uh, the methodology, how I evaluate uh, a database, uh, like in these two dimension. One is the scalability, because, you know, like database, uh, the scalability is a very important angle to emulate uh, database. And uh, uh, another dimension is the query query latency, that indicates the, the complexity of your, your query. So we are putting some, you know, popular or you know existing solution, database solution in this uh, in this factor. The first I want to put, you know, like MySQL, Postgres, or some um, uh, single node uh, RDBMS, um, and uh, very we we should very familiar with some something like MySQL PG. They are really good at some, you know, really low latency requirement. Uh, scenarios like OLTP scenarios. Um, so that means uh, the, the Swiss spot of this uh, relational database is in maybe um, sub millisecond and uh, one or two digit uh, millisecond level query. <clears throat> but uh, just like I said, it is a single node database. Uh, the scalability will be the big problem for this kind of database. So, <clears throat> and I would say first, TidyB is um, the we really have the building uh, scalability, so it can scale out well. And uh, I, I put it 500 terabytes here is just because the the biggest introduction cluster I have ever seen uh, is 500 terabytes. But from the designing uh, goal of TidyB, we should uh, I, I want it to be the horizontal scalability to you know very high level like. One petabyte, something like that. <clears throat> and uh, also, I, I in, in the next few slides, I will share how how do we achieve that. And also, I would say uh, from the the latency uh, requirements here, like TidyB also can support very low latency uh, uh, scenarios. So that means TidyB is one hundred percent an OLTP database. You can trust it as your primary database, just like MySQL or some, you know, uh, introduction of uh, primary database. But let's go. And um, on the other hand, you may you may think, hey, we have a lot of you know big data stack like Hadoop, Type, Box, Snowflake, a lot of things solve the uh, scalability problem really well. So what's the difference between you know PyDB and uh, Snowflake or Databricks and some you know big data technology? So I would say for just like the solution, like um, uh, like I mentioned, Snowflake, Databricks, Data Warehouse, Data Lake, things like this, they solve the you know um, scalability problem really well. 
but from the query, uh, sometimes this all kind of database are you know analytical designed for the analytical workload. That means most of the time this this kind of technology is used for offline data analytical thing. You are not going to put all the, all this kind of database as your primary database for the online serving, right? So uh, imagine that you cannot use Snowflake as your OLTP database. So yeah, uh, and uh, in this area, one PyDB support full featured SQL, so you can write query just like you you wrote you write in Snowflake or Databricks, complicated ad hoc uh, analytical query, but it also can support the online you know um, workload, so you can trust it as the you know online ser uh, service database. So this is what we call um, the like the H tag. Um, we call it the it is like the single source of truth of your whole data. So this this area is the uh, you know the sweet spot of of PyDB. Okay. And and then the next part is um, it's like too good to be true, right? It, it's just like single database that can solve both, you know, like the OLTP, uh, and uh, you can run some you know complicated uh, query uh, directly on your production database. Uh, it is like too good to be true, right? Because if it is uh, true. That means we can, you know, dramatically reduce the complexity of your you know, data technology stack. So in the next next part, I will introduce how we achieve that and uh, under the hood about technology. So the first thing I want to share is um, the beginning, right? Today we are, we are talking about the evil evolution of the IDB. So I think the the <laughs> the best way to 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 talk about this topic is start back to the you know the starting point. Seven years ago, uh, you know, think uh, we have three co-founders and one of three. Uh, and I would say before think uh, <clears throat> these three co-founders, including me, uh, we are all those engineers. We are all engineers. We we work, uh, we were working for the large internet company. Uh, before you know, we we, we founded PingCap, and at that time we are in charge of the you know internal MySQL cluster at that company because uh, it is a very popular internet company and uh, the business is growing uh, faster uh, and faster, and also they are doing pretty good, uh, pretty good job in the you know uh, marketing and the business side. So that requires a very crazy level of SLA. So we are the, and the storage for database tech stack uh, we were using at that time is MySQL a lot. And also we use a lot of HBase for the, you know, uh, the NoSQL solution. And um, the, 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 in the, in the old day, like seven years ago, if you have, uh, if you're using MySQL and uh, you are, and also uh, you want to have a scalability solution uh, of using, uh, using, using MySQL, the only way you can do is share it using some middlewares to, you know, do the uh, kind of like a query routing and to do the, the, the horizontal sharding. It's, yeah, just sharding. And uh, we build the you know sharding proxy uh, in the as the middleware, and the under the hood, we manually maintain the you know high uh, high availability for the for the MySQL because in the old days MySQL only have the uh, the only way to to do the uh, HA for MySQL is using the some something like primary secondary uh, replication uh, using. Uh, some technology like MySQL be log. So you must be re really familiar with this. But you know, um, the cluster is getting bigger and bigger. Just uh, just, just like I mentioned, the, the business is growing uh, uh, bigger and bigger and doing the business is doing so well. And uh, it's really painful uh, because 
like every two months, we have to reshard the whole uh, cluster because you know uh, we met some uh, cap uh, capacity problem, and uh, uh, we also do the have to do the the, the reshard and rebalance every two months because just like I mentioned, we have very high standard of the SLA. We don't have have the the our boss told us. We cannot have any downtime, zero downtime. So you have to reshard and uh, uh, the, the cluster, you know, without any downtime. So uh, we always do the do the do the migration and the rebalance at midnight. So it's very painful at the time. And also, you know, when you're maintaining a large scale of MySQL instance internally, you will find found that the hardware is not very uh reliable so we are talking about hundreds of you know uh, servers that may have the crash or out out of power outage or disk corruption like every day but you know uh at the time the mysql we are we are using uh store uh is some uh is storing very mission critical data like the user's personal data uh very mission critical so this consistency is uh, is it is a requirement uh, at that time. But you know, you it's really hard to maintain the strong consistency in the traditional MySQL bin log replication manually. So it is really hard to do that. So every time we do the failover, we have to manually check the data consistency, make sure that everything is is good, and and then to do the manually data recover. So this is also very, very, very painful. And uh, the most painful thing is, uh, is that because um, we are infrastructure, we, we were infrastructure team member. So the application developer uh, who very familiar with uh, MySQL, building application using MySQL, but uh, they, they found that if you are using the sharding MySQL, you, you cannot do the complicated uh, query on your you know, sharded MySQL cluster. Uh, you have to write your, all of your query with the sharding key, and you cannot do the join, you cannot group by a lot of things. So application developers don't know why, because they really familiar with the, the, the good old SQL database. So they, are asking, they were asking us, why I cannot do that? Sometimes it's very angry because uh, you know we are we are the guy who's slow, slowing down the business. So we, we have to explain why they, they um, why they cannot do that on the sharded database. So it's really really painful to us. And so in, in the world, um, we don't want to shut, right? So we have a very ambitious uh, idea that we have to build a new database that is that should be compatible with MySQL, and so that we we are not going to explain to you know every angry uh, application developer, and uh, but under the hood this this database can horizontal scale and solve all the problem of the the, the you know like distributed system. So we have to build it from ground up. And notice that at that time, uh, the MySQL cluster we are maintain we were maintaining is uh, OLTP database. So the the initial idea of building a new database, our uh, the first target is to build the OLTP database. We are we are because we are we are not a big data guy. We are not data uh, and analyst. So. Um, we are we are the system engineer. We just want to build a high performance RTP distributed database. So this is some you know design requirement of the, the PyDB. The first uh, the first requirement is we have to you know the I think the one of the best things about uh, SQL and the traditional database is asset transaction. Uh, as a transaction, basically you can handle multiple rows mutation uh, atomically. So you don't need to worry about the, the consistency or the data corruption uh, when the database have the transactions amended. That's very important. And that will really lower the bar for the application developer 
to uh, create something, you know, uh, mission critical application. The second is scale, right? Just like uh, the, the scale out process should should be, you know, um, totally transparent to the application layer. They don't need to worry about, you know, the resharding, um, something like that. They don't need to specify the, uh, the sharding key and it's totally transparent. And the full feature cycle, that means we are not going to sacrifice the, you know, you can write anything just like the good old MySQL. You don't need to uh, need to specify the sharding key. Uh, you can run any uh, you know complicated point as you like. And also high availability. Uh, the system should have the self recover or the auto failover uh, capability uh, to the uh, capability. Yes, for the for the high uh, for the HA because we are talking about hundreds of nodes cluster and uh, just just like I like I said. Uh, at this level, uh, the cluster like this level that may have the hardware uh, incidents like every day. So HA is, uh, is should be the building feature, and also um, speaks MySQL uh, protocol because we want to you know lower the, the bar for the data migration. So it's very important. Of course, open source. Okay. And uh, seven years ago, we had really to, you know, uh, started this this project. TidyB started a TidyB project, and uh, we happened to read a paper about Google Spanner and Google F1, uh, which is a, a distributed relational database, which is widely used in, internally in Google. Uh, actually, we we think that is the feature of database because it is just like uh, our goal. It provides a globally distributed SQL database with transaction semantic. That's perfect. But there, there's no any you know open source implementation of um, Google Spanner at that time. So you know at that time we don't have Cockroach to be. Uh, so basically we started uh, the started the company at the same time as Cockroach to be because we are also inspired by um, these two papers. One is Spanner and another is uh, F1. And uh, I believe that uh, nowadays, and like uh, the Cockroach TV and the Tidy D, we are growing really fast. Uh, yeah. Okay. And hi. And uh, so, also, this is a very ambitious target, right? And at that time, we only had three engineers <laughs> because, you know, uh, we only had three co founders, uh, three of us are uh, engineers, but we set a very high, uh, very ambitious goal to, to build the whole database from ground up. Yeah, <laughs> because yeah, we, we, we think that we should, you know, um, we can write the code. Okay. So I will talk about, talk about the technical details, how we achieve all of this uh, fantastic, uh, you know, how, how we answer this, all of this question. Uh, for example, how to scale with pain, without pain, and uh, how to support the distributed transaction, and uh, how about the uh, you know high availability, self recovery. Uh, this is three. These three questions um, are, I think, the one most important questions the database design should be should be answered. Okay, so the key to answer this question is the storage part. This is the very high level architecture of the whole TIDP system. The, basically, from the architecture point of view, the, TIDP, the, the whole TIDP system, we have like one is the, is the SQL above NoSQL architecture. Imagine that if you're familiar with NoSQL system like Cassandra or HBase or Big Table, something like that, you can uh, you can imagine that we put the stateless SQL layer or SQL proxy on top of the storage layer, so the the SQL layer is totally stateless. It only translates user SQL statement into the key value operations uh, and send it to the the key value part. So basically, this is the uh, the KV part, the storage part, which is the the, the data actually stored uh, in this part. So that's the key of the whole system. <clears throat> okay, 
So uh, let me introduce the, the technical detail of the storage part of the IDE. Because remember that at the very beginning, we just want to design an OLTP database. It's a scalable OLTP database. Okay, so uh, the first thing we designed is the IKB, uh, which is a distributed transactional key value database according to the name key value, right? So uh, inside IKB, the, the data is actually stored in the key value pairs uh, format. And uh, imagine that it is a huge uh, dictionary. So it is a, is a flat space of the, the key. Okay, so it is a flat uh, key space, and uh, we split the, the key space into multiple uh, range or multiple continuously uh, partition of the, the, the whole key space. And uh, we call it region. Uh, note that the, the region is not the geography region, it is the continuously um, key value pairs. And uh, uh, because you know the key is ordered uh, in the dictionary, dictionary order, and it, every split, uh, in this case, every region is a 96 megabytes in chunk with the continuously uh, key value range. And also in Takemi, we provide the uh, MVCC, uh, multi version concurrency control, that is very important to the you know, transaction implementation. So I use a, a case to uh, demonstrate the idea of the data region range, right? And as you can you can see, for example, like we have a key space like this. Uh, maybe uh, Ashley, Bob, Charles, and Frank, and uh, there may be three regions in this system. Uh, and you can you can see if, if there is a region A to B. That means uh, Ashley and Bob uh, line to, uh, belongs to region uh, this region, and uh, region C and D. Uh, you can see the the, the chalice because it is starts with C, right? So it uh, it will be belongs to this region, and uh, if we have a region E to Z, that that means Ed and Frank will line to this. So remember the color here I will use in the uh, next few slides. So basically, you can consider the, the whole type KB is a uh, super huge. Uh, if you are a C++ engineer, you must be familiar with uh, STD map, right? It's a black, red, black tree. You can you consider type KB is a super huge distributed uh, map. So basically, the Data region is the minimum unit for the data movement. So maybe the data, the, the region uh, may not be in the same uh, node. So for example, in this case, uh, these three regions happen to you know, uh, uh, store in different uh, storage nodes. But maybe in, in another case, the, 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 the region uh, can, can store in, in this, but I would say it is the minimal data movement uh, unit uh, is, is region. So you may ask why 96 megabytes, right? Why, uh, for example, if we have 100 terabytes of data uh, and the data will be split into millions of 96 megabytes chunk. So why 96? Because uh, let's say it's, uh, it's not very big, right? If you in the data center, you're moving the 96 data chunk from one node to another node, that will be not a big job. So uh, it is small enough for the data to move in smoothly. And also 96 megabytes is big enough to save the space for the metadata storage because in the distributed system, uh, within KDB, we have a metadata storage system to store the, 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 the location information and the metadata for every region. So the, uh, just like I said, if we have 100 terabytes of data, so the metadata entry will be like 100 terabytes divided 96 megabytes. Uh, so it is not a huge number. We can 
put it in the metadata storage memory. So that can be uh, really fast to look up. And another important thing we need to understand is uh, every, and the, the, the region is only the logical concept, logical concept. And the physical in the data is actually stored uh, in RuxDB in every node's uh, local RuxDB. Okay. So another important, you know, just to, like I said, our mission, our goal is to have the uh, building uh, high availability for the for the system. So that means uh, just not not like the single node database. You know, like MySQL cannot do the high availability, don't have the building HA solution, but TiDB have uh, by default we replicate the data. Uh, at least three copies. By default, it's three copies. Uh, but it's also configurable. So, and the data, the, the, the every region we will have three replica across uh, different different nodes. And uh, the data is replicated by Raft uh, protocol. I am not going to uh, to 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 get a lot of details of uh, how Raft work. Um, but you can just consider it's a modern data uh, replication algorithm and provides the you know strong consistency and also provide the very good thing. Another thing is uh, self recovery. So the data recovery in Raft protocol, you are uh, not is not um, um, required manually. It is automatically to do the. Uh, Data recovery uh, in in, in Raft. So sometimes we will suggest our users use uh, five to seven replica uh, for some very important systems like core banking systems, things like this. Because we have, you know, uh, today we I, I think we have some we have some you know uh, uh, users are using KDB in some you know like uh, core banking system to do the. Do the transaction, uh, real real transaction. So at this case, we suggest them to replicate the data in like five or seven. <clears throat> okay. So the the first uh, I I believe we just answered the first question uh, about one how the data uh, how 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 we dealing with the auto failure or HA right because the using rough to you know um, do the uh, data replication so we have multiple replica for every piece of data and uh, i believe we answer another question about how distributed right uh, because the data is split into countless um, data region uh, right the, the the split and so another another important uh, question is how to scale out uh, transparently, right? You don't need to, you don't want to, you know, manually do the resharding, right? So um, the key uh, of, you know, implementing the scale out system, uh, in, in just like I gave you is, um, in every data range or the uh, region, we support split and merge. You can consider this the kind of like the basic functionality of the every data region, right? Imagine that uh, every region is a is a is a key value range. We have a start key and the end key to to indicate the the the, the data uh, the data region. And imagine that we keep inserting data into this range and. Suddenly, it will exceed the threshold, like 96 megabytes. And at this moment, the, the, the region will automatically split into two smaller regions. That's just like the cell division. Okay? And uh, on the other hand, we also support an operation called merge. For example, if you delete almost all the data within the uh, continuously two region, that uh, this two region will merge back to one uh, region to save the, the space for metadata storage, right? So remember, this is split and merge. The second key to the scale out process is 
another paradigm is data movement. And this is a very important concept to, to understand uh, how TypeDB can scale out well. For example, data movement is, uh, is also very simple. For example, if we want to move this yellow region from this node to, to this node, what gonna be happen? What will be happen in the in the system? The first, the the uh, yellow region will create a new replica in the in the node four, no 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 sphere, and then after sending the uh, the the replica, create a new replica, it will the second step will remove the uh, local replica of uh, of this this region. So. The result is the data is moving from this node to, to, to that node. So this is data movement. So we have okay, sorry for the interruption. So uh, this region split and uh, merging is very similar to the concept of H base and uh, split and the compact. Yes. Compact and merge. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, any, any, anything drastically different from that? Yeah, it's uh, the um, the concept is is pretty much the same, okay. but the implementation is totally different. Uh, okay, and uh, yeah, we borrow this concept from HBase. Yeah, if, if you're familiar with HBase, you are you are, you are will be very familiar with why we choose the region, the name here, because the region is determined in HBase. Because I really love HBase, and but I I found that uh, a lot of people are confused about why we choose region, because when we talk about region. Uh, everyone consider it is like a geography region. Is that uh, something like that? But you got it. It is uh, the turn of H base. Yeah, yeah. Uh, H base for already yes. been using it for a long time. Yes, yes. Okay, so uh, with the split primitive and the data movement, so basically the scale out will be the split plus move. Okay, I will expand it by also using this diagram. For example, uh, when we add the new node to the to the system, you can you can see that uh, for example the, uh, the the yellow region getting bigger and bigger, and the first step is data will uh, split into two smaller regions, and then move the, the uh, using the data movement to move the, the data to, to the new node for the for the binary. So basically the scale out process is um, the core idea of the scale out is just it is just like this. So um, yeah. Can and sorry, okay. can scale out be interpreted just you know you're moving data to different more machines? Yes. So Yes, that's what it means, right? Yeah, it's later. Yes, uh, the scale, uh, for example, like I just, just said that the, the region is the minimal unit uh, for the, you know, uh, storing the data, right? Uh, the scale out, uh, uh, it is not uh, very precise. It is like the data rebalance or scale out or scale in, because we can, in using this mechanism, split plus move, we can control the control the data placement uh, smoothly. Yeah. You, you have a concept of skill up as well, right? Yeah. Uh, no, no. Actually, skill up is uh, in in my understanding is to use a better machine. Yeah, for, for like memory. Or yes, 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 like, yeah. yes. But this is not related to the to no, the distributed system. Yeah, we also can have the skill up. Uh, yeah, and you can just simply change the the new new nodes for the uh high KV node. We can can have a scale, but the really uh important thing to the distributed system is how to handle the scale out. Yeah, it is uh, very important for the distributed system. Okay, what about fair is that, sorry okay is that the same expression like uh use also like a horizontal expansion the same thing or yes the same thing for example horizontal scale yeah. And uh, what about failure? For example, if you're running the distributed system and uh, every node can crash, and uh, at this at this moment you don't want to you know wake up at midnight to recover the data. So in this case, in KDE, for example, like uh, 
this 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 no crash, and uh, you know, like I said, every data within the the rough group will notice that the one of the peer is missing, and then the system will add the you know new replica in different another active node. So that's the the, the core idea of the, the failover failover. So this is also very important for the database which designed for the well TP workload because uh, the HA is also is very important. Okay, um, rent scan. So you know our target is to build the uh, SQL database. As some you know in SQL database we always want to have the queries like uh, the range scan. So because we choose the range partition. Because you know, like the key is ordered by the, the uh, is ordered in dictionary order, and also we have continuously um, as the region is, is is continuous. So the red scan will only send the, the request to the region who actually owns the data. It will not do the forecasting. So that's the that's why we use the range based partition method, and not. Uh, Hash based partitioning because if you choose the harsh partitioning, uh, in most of the case you have to broadcast the the if you have the scan operation you have to broadcast the request to all of the nodes. Yeah, and also insert it, that will be very simple. Uh, then the TKV the the, the story <coughs> system have the insert of uh, request. We will ask. Uh, ask the metadata storage to find out which region is in charge of this this this, this key, and then directly send this uh, key to the uh, specific uh, region. And uh, this this region leader will replicate the data into multiple uh, replicas. Okay. Okay, I will speed up. Um, and also, we can have some, you know, mechanism to do the automatically data uh, placement. So, for example, for the high availability, we are not going to put the, the replica, two replica within same node because, you know, if this this node crash, we will lose two copies, right? So we will place the replica on different nodes. If you deploy the system across different uh, available zones in different data center, we will automatically place the data in different, uh, place the copy in different uh, AC. Okay, and uh, another important uh, data placement rule is a load base. For example, um, the, the system will, will schedule the data based on the real time workload. For example, when you have a large scale system, but all of your workload happens in one or two uh, row. At this moment, the system will notice that this node is really busy. So the uh, the system will automatically balance the data to to to, to different node to uh, for the uh, to make sure that the whole whole system will, will not have the hotspot. And uh, another interesting uh, feature uh, we have is uh, the follower read, right? Because you know, like uh, I, I just mentioned, we have multiple replicas, but just for high av availability, right? But why not? In some case, you don't need to uh, have the strong consistency requirement. Why not this replicas support the read workload, uh, right? So we. Actually, we have this feature, we call it follow read, and uh, we will have a good performance uh, when you write SQL like this. And this is the real world technique cluster in production. As you can see, it is the, the cluster, it's a, it's a big internet company uh, using KDB in production. You can see this cluster has more than 800 terabytes in capacity, and the current storage size is more than 500 terabytes. And the region number is more than one million, and uh, the the system is uh, so that's the beauty of distributed system, right? So uh, their head of infra <laughs> post a tweet uh, and say thank you to Tidb uh, because it is like uh, 
Uh, the peak read performance is about 100 million row per second. You cannot do this number in the single node database, right? And uh, also the, the peak write is more than 87K per second, yeah. And uh, uh, the transaction. Um, the transaction part, uh, because of the time, I will not try to, 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 to too much, uh, too many details about the, the transaction. The all of the thing you need to know about the distributed transaction provided by TiDB is the from the user's perspective, uh, it is basically uh, what uh, it is compatible with MySQL. If you can write a transaction like MySQL, we can use the same uh, code in TiDB. Yeah, we will keep the 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 transaction semantic and the strong consistency internally. But the price is the latency will be a little bit higher because when you want to have the uh, consistency across different nodes, uh, acid transaction, uh, the only way is two-phase commit. So two-phase commit will introduce some extra network run chip. So that means will be a little bit higher latency compared to the single node database. Okay. Uh, okay. You do have them worse than later, right? Sorry. I do have them worse worse than later, right? Yes, I will talk about it later. Okay. And the, all I mentioned is only storage part. So remember, like the whole architecture is the compute and the storage, mm -hmm. and we provide the transaction in semantics in the key value layer. For example, this 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 all of this is key and value pairs. I'm, I'm not talking about the, 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 the SQL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, the transaction, transaction, optimization, transaction, transaction. So this is the storage part. So this is our overview of our, you know, the, the solid foundation, um, which is TKV. Uh, the physical in the data is stored uh, within RocksDB. Bottom tested, open source by Facebook, and we build a rough consensus algorithm on top of the physical storage to make sure multiple replicas uh, keep the same. Uh, and then we build the asset transaction uh, to phrase commit on top of the uh, rough consensus algorithm and provide the API key value API to the application layer. Okay, cool. We got a solid storage layer for the OLTP workload. But what about the SQL, right? So remember, our goal is still to build a you know, SQL database, okay? The SQL is uh, pretty much, uh, the idea of the SQL is very simple. Uh, we just translate the user's SQL statement and the relational data to key value format, right? Just like, uh, for example, we have a user table like this. And but under the hood, things like high KB, which um, the, the KB key value part is all key value pairs. And the every row is uh, some you know key prefix, primary key, and the, the actual value of the key value pair is the, the, the row data. So it is just like uh, encoded, encode all of the uh, relational tables into flattened uh, key value pairs. And also another important thing for the SQL database is secondary index. So the secondary index is uh, also very straightforward. The idea of uh, implementation is also very straightforward. If we have uh, the secondary key, we will have some extra key value pairs for the, for the index. For example, in, in, in this case, if we have a key as the secondary index, that means, for example, like uh, this one, we just simply encode <coughs> encode the colon value into the key part here. So I will use a demo to, to show that how secondary index lookup works. Um, for example, if you have this, this curve like this, um, select start from users where name equals to anything. And then the first, the, 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 the SQL layer will, will ask the KV, the key value storage, have a key prefix lookup. And uh, looking for the key, it looks like this because this is the, the secondary index, the, the value. 
<coughs> and then it will return, hey, there is a there is a it's an index key with the, the prefix like this, and then we will get the primary key of the, the row. And this is the first stage. The, the second stage is the Q, uh, the, the SQL, SQL, SQL layer will ask another get uh, to get the actual value of the, the row. So that means one lookup um, in secondary index will uh, lead to two um, key value operation. So yeah, this is basically how it works. And another big difference about the uh, KDB and other relational database is, um, so that, that will lead to another very important question or technical decision. Why we are not using the uh, implementation of MySQL or Postgres code? For example, the, the, the normal idea or, or the normal uh, database just like Aurora or <laughs> something like Aurora, they just reuse the whole MySQL, MySQL's code on top of a distributed storage uh, and claim themselves, it is, hey, we are, we are, we, we are distributed database. But in our, our mind, we have to write the whole SQL processing from scratch. But why? Why we re reinvent the, the whole SQL layer from ground up? I think the the very um, big um, the the reason the uh, the core reason one of the core reasons of we we build it from ground up is that this part because you know uh, in the distributed system and sometimes we really need to leverage the uh, distributed different node the computing power of different node so that means we have to push down some computing logic down to the storage node to do the distributed computing. But most of the traditional RDBMS like MySQL or Postgres, their code base, their SQL engine is not designed for the distributed system. So imagine like, uh, imagine that uh, basically we are building something like Spark, you know, like do the, do the distributed computing, distributed SQL. So in KDB's uh, SQL engine, the red part here is pretty much the same with the traditional database, like the parser, logical optimizer for your SQL, and the physical optimizer pretty much the same. But the green part here is totally different because it uh, belongs to some distributed computing framework. Okay. So I will also use some example to, to show uh, the, 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 the powerful of the distributed computing. Like uh, we have this the query like this, select count star from table, some filters here. And uh, in the computing layer, the physical plan inside KDB will be like this. Uh, this is uh, aggregation, count star. Uh, and uh, the, the SQL layer will push down the computing logic to the storage node who is in charge of the, the data in, in, in T. And then in the local storage node, the, the filter uh, will, 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 will get the partial aggregation locally. And then the type KV who is in charge of the, um, the compute will uh, return the partial result of the, the, the data scan. And in the, the SQL layer, we'll do the final aggregation and then to you know, give the answer to the client. So that's what, that, that will answer your question. The final aggregation is happening in the, the SQL, SQL layer. Okay. And uh, the same mechanism, we, we, can, we can also support uh, some complicated uh, SQL queries like group by. And uh, I will not you know, uh, show too much details about how to do the group by, but basically uh, is it will generate the hash table in memory and to do the streaming uh, processing. Um, so, yeah, also join. Okay. So, join is a little bit interesting because uh, the first step we will put the smaller table. If you have two table join, right, we will put the uh, smaller table into memory in the, in the computing node, which is type, type, type D. And, uh, and 
and and and we will prop the T two in, in in the streaming style to you know do the do the join. Okay, the hash join. Yeah. But this has joined basic ID small table versus a big table. You yes. have two huge tables. I will I will talk to you later. <laughs> so this is a part of story. <laughs> yeah, you you are really you smart. <laughs> you guess why I want to talk about it later. <laughs> so, so at this moment, uh, all of these things we have like two years to get get the whole thing done from the first line of code to what we achieve in, in in this this page. And uh, it is like trend, um, 2017, we found that we actually built some very powerful database. And is the problem solved? That pretty much, um, that works. Actually, it is very, you know, uh, when we released the project, and a lot of MySQL users are, are crazy about that because that really solves some uh, problems about the sketch uh, scalable MySQL problem. You don't need to maintain the, the sharding. You don't need to explain to the angry developers who un don't understand the MySQL sharding. You can drop the database to, to the application developers. Hey, you can write any query you like. You can insert any uh, large amount of data you like. And that works. But we found some very interesting use case. Like the people are still using MySQL as the primary database. Like still today, you can you imagine that we build a much more better uh, distributed MySQL. But we found that a lot of users are still using sharded MySQL as their uh, primary database for the well, TV workload. But they are using bin logs or data replication uh, to synchronize all of the data to the Another TiDB cluster because you know TiDB speaks MySQL protocol, so that that can be very easy for you know for the for the TiDB uh, to act like a MySQL second secondary MySQL to synchronize data in real time. And remember, TiDB at this moment in 2017 is the OLTP database. We are Go based storage, but people are running really complicated OLAP query, OLAP style query like. Join a lot of tables uh, in, in TiDB. So it's super slow. So we're asking ourselves why people are running all that query on our distributed, uh, fantastic SQL database for design for all the TV workload. So, because you know, we are database experts. We know that sometimes the Oh, well, if for the OLAP query, you are, you are running on the core database, that may be 1,000 times faster. I will have a number. This is the ClickHouse, the, the benchmark result compares to the same data set, the same query versus MySQL. You can see ClickHouse in, in, for like this query is uh, 4,000 times faster. So this is the power of Colin database. So it's really, really, really slow. Uh, if you're running some, some you know, complicated query on our TV database. But we talked to our customer, or our users are uh, using the TiDB in that style. Uh, they told me, you are too naive because, uh, you know, in the old days, normally the system uh, the, in, the, in the company or the, the database users are using database in this way, right? We have a uh, in-production database like MySQL, Oracle, or any other production or TV database. And uh, normally we have the ETL process to keep moving the data, moving the data from the RTP database to database like the house, the, the analytical database. And from the user's point of view, if we want to do the analytical workload uh, in latest data, so we sometimes we want to get the insight from the latest data. So the total time of the whole process is the time of ETL plus the time of uh, OLAP query on, on the OAP database. So most of the time, the, the time cost is happens in the ETL process. So imagine that you insert the data into my, MySQL, maybe tomorrow we, you can get the analytical result from your data warehouse. 
because sometimes the ETL process will happen in the midnight, right? But in 2017, you have TIDB because you know sometimes TIDB can use the act like a MySQL replica, right? You can use the bin log, something like uh, the CDC mechanism to synchronize the data from your upstream MySQL to, to TIDB. And uh, the data synchronization using MySQL bin log uh, only takes few, like few seconds. It is not EDL, but uh, it is the real time data synchronization uh, process. So the total time of getting the insight from your latest data is the time of the CDC. You know, you know like the, the time of CDC, the, the change data capture by, uh, by bin log plus the time to you know running uh, of running OLAP queries directly on, on TIDB. And maybe that the query is super slow in TIDB because you know it's a role-based OLAP database. Not only takes few few minutes, but it's it's definitely faster than the, the old system, right? Sometimes it will take a day for the whole EDL process. So we found that people really need this uh, HTAP solution, right? That means people really need this hybrid transactional analytical processing database. Okay, so it is, yeah, what, what, what we saw. And uh, yeah, and uh, we have a very cool demo uh, called OS Insight, but we don't have the time, so you can even play it around. I would say this, uh, this, this website is the perfect the demo of the, the idea of, of this system. And actually, the whole OS inside, we only have one database, which is IDB, to support this. Uh, if you open the OS inside front page, you can see the, 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 keep, the, the event is keep jumping uh, in the front page. All of, data, all of the data in OS inside is the real time data, real time events happening in GitHub. And we do the you know real time analytics workload directly on the real time data of GitHub. More than four billion of rows uh, in the database um, yeah, currently. So also you know like uh, in the old days, if you want to build something like a real time uh, application, this is the tradition traditional architecture. You use the sharded MySQL or sharded Postgres. And then you run the whole process of ETL, introducing some technology like Spark, Hive, or DBT, a lot of things, EMS, and running your analytic query on ClickHouse or another Reshit, Snowflake, uh, and then using some uh, kind of like reverse ETL to backfill the data to your production database. But using TIDB, you only have to maintain one database to solve all the problems. Okay, but there is another, uh, it's, things are not that simple because it is too good to be true, right? So remember that we, we have the join, you know, here. And I think that that, that, that guy um, come up with the, the question, how about the big table? If we have two huge table join, we have to uh, move the, the, the if we have a very big join of two large table, the first step we have to build a whole man, uh, hash table for, for one table, right? And what if the, 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 the table, smaller, small table is larger, is big, larger than the physical memory of the IDB aggregation node? So that's the big problem we are facing at that time because when people are running some uh, large, join uh, and then the TIDB will crash because the out of memory. And so the problem is, the first problem is how to scale the, the, the compute for the HTAP uh, workload. Because we are not OLAP database at that time. So in 2000 and I think that, uh, 2017, we have a workaround because we, have, we found so many people are using TIDB just like uh, Distributed analytical database, mm. and and then why we just introduce another compute because you know uh, having the SQL layer and computing layer and storage layer is totally separate se separated. So we introduce a Spark 
for the data you know computing because you know the uh, spark can they, they have a distributed join can support distributed join because uh in the internally uh spark will build a distributed hash table across different nodes so we can uh we can do the uh the data reshuffle across different nodes to 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 to, to, to aggregate and uh, generate the result but then this workaround have uh, so we introduced the, the term that we call launch term that we call TySpot. And also the TySpot can push down the computing logic to the storage node. That is awesome. But also have the disadvantages. The primary disadvantage of this, it is a workaround. <laughs> from, from the user's um, user experience or user's perspective, we have to maintain another whole Spark system. So that means users are going to, if you are running queries on TypeB, you have to write Spark SQL. That will be really confused to a lot of users. And the second advantage, disadvantage is TypeB, just like the storage part, is still the row based system. So if you're running some you know, analytical query on the row based database, that will be really slow. Mm -hmm. So this is two major disadvantages <coughs> of the, the TypeSpark solution. And then we can do it better. We are thinking, uh, and how can we do do it better, right? So that leads me to we think about the data replication, because remember in the storage part, right? All the data we we have, we have multiple records, <coughs> and uh, the the data is uh, can can be scaled out really well and horizontal scalable. And the data is in different replica, uh, is synchronized uh, uh, in real time because of the rough consensus algorithm. And they come up with the idea hey, why not we can create another storage copy just for the OLAP workload, right? Pretty simple and pretty very straightforward. So imagine that in the old days, we don't have this part. And then we automatically add a new node and create a new replica in the separated node, uh, synchronize the data uh, using RUT, and uh, automatically we don't need to worry about the scalability. We don't need to care about the uh, data synchronization because it is all have already implemented inside TIKV. And all this, uh, the only thing we have to do is like the we can redirect the OLAP query to this kind of nodes. So problem solved, right? But you know, uh, route is a consensus algorithm. If you have four replica in, of your data, that means you have to you know uh, the majority of the four is three. You at least have to copy uh, the data into three copies of the rough group. Then you can guarantee the data is secure. So that means sometimes if you run in the very heavy OLAP query on the rough group, that means that, that will interfere with the uh, TP performance. Okay, we can also solve the, the problem. How to solve this problem, right? Uh, we solve this problem by introducing a new member or the new mechanism to the original raft uh, algorithm. We call it Raft Linear. It is a new role of Raft group. It is a non-moving member. So the OLTP workload, the right data, they are not going to care about the non-moving member. So this is, uh, so basically we can just simply uh, create the linear role in every data set we want to do the analytical workload. Right, the problem solved. So, if the, the, the query happens in this kind of node, that will not be interfered with the OLTP nodes because they are all linears, right? It is perfect. But what about the, the corner, the storage? Because we only solve the data replication, the data scalability, HA, but we are not solving the, the corner storage problem. So the solution of this question is also very straightforward. We just simply use the coordinate format 
for the extra uh, copy of the this kind of data. So basically, every you know piece of data we will have an extra copy, extra copy. But this extra copy is one using linear uh, protocol to synchronize the data. The second, use the coordinate format for their fast data scan. So this is what type. Uh, this is this kind of knowledge we call it type flash. Uh, type flash is, is a special kind of the storage node, but unlike normal type heavy nodes, all of the data within the region in this kind of node is stored with the coordinate format. So that's uh, this 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 is the missing part of our whole H type uh, solution. So to tidy be. Uh, and this architecture will automatically have the two good things about the uh, one is isolation because uh, this is perfect isolation to prove uh, because the, the, the data is stored in different physical nodes. So that means that can prevent the workload uh, interference. And uh, yeah, also the, the, the SQL. Uh, SQL layer, the computing layer will decide which nodes. Uh, for example, if the, this uh, or TP workload, the, the computing node will push down the the the, the, the query to the or TP part, and uh, if it is a or AP query, we will push down to the uh, type flash part. And on the, another direction, and another. Very cool thing that's very unique to the PyDB system, and I believe that today this is the uh, the, the the things I am going to introduce. It is the only PyDB is the only system that can do such thing. We call it integration. I will also use the uh, this query like this. For example, we have a for example we have a query like this two table join. But the the condition here we have an index index lookup. So in TidyB, TidyB SQL layer will push down the index lookup or index scan operations to the row based store because it will be much faster for the row based store to support the, the index lookup random lookup. And the, the join, the table join, the table scan, the full table scan, this kind of operation we push down to the uh, coordinate storage and then merge the, the result in the in the computing layer. So that basically that can that can in TIDB we can leverage the benefits from both OLTP or the row-based format and also the coordinate format. It is the hybrid node. I think TIDB is the only system existing in the world can, can do such thing. Yeah, and at the scale. So uh, this is something I really proud of. Okay, what about the future? Um, so sorry. Okay. Do you mind that can you use the iceberg on the column? Ice iceberg. Yeah, oh yeah. iceberg the, the system. Yeah, the dark layer, basically. Uh no, <laughs> because you know like uh, um actually type type flash node is deeply integrated uh, because it is uh, the storage format and the protocol is um, very close to to type KB. so you can consider it's the same system. We cannot have another system because, for example, all the uh, iceberg cannot synchronize the rough log. Right, but um, type flash node accepted the rough log sent it by the type KB. So it is uh, you can consider type flash is part of our storage engine. It is not a separate system. Yeah. So um, okay. So excuse me. Considering this, the size. I just want to make a question. Quick question. Like yeah. Uh, I mean, Thai flash is uh, it's kind of like storage node, right? Yes. So your query is to go from your Thai TV, right? Yeah. And the thing is, question is like, how about the consistency between the Thai TV and Thai flash? Okay, that's a great question. So notice that um, why we choose 
rough learner here because you know um yeah, at, at the data synchronization at this level in rough we have all of the mvcc and the transaction information in the very low level rough block so that means the high flash node also got the all information about the transaction Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's why we are not going to support, you know, I spot because mm. we have a lot of transaction information in, in the type, type uh, Yeah, this is this so not uh, compatible. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. So it's not a simply streaming. It's not just it's a, not simply during streaming. Yeah, it's kind of like a another row in the graph consists. Yes. It's like a, it's not like strong as a, uh, the member, but still, like have some something like MACC so that we can keep this consistency. And if you query from like the Thai flash and Thai TV, you still got consistency level. Yes, you person. got you got the whole idea. All right, okay. yeah, that's very right. smart, right? Right. Pretty good. Okay. Uh, yeah, the future you can just uh, experience the future. Thai TV cloud, and have a try. Yeah, this is the future. <laughs> Okay, thank you. This is the last thing. Oh. <laughs> 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 Yeah, okay. Here we go. I try my best. Stop <laughs> care. Yeah, so, so the system here you are compatible <laughs> with uh databricks. Uh compete with uh, compatible with databricks because uh, you're smart uh, smart. Actually, the, no. the, the, the spark thing is come with the type DB 2.0. And then we uh, we still want you user to use this the query engine of type DB. Mm. So because we have one database, uh, it's a unified platform, we are going to introduce another system. So I would not say we abandon the spark because a lot of users still using type spark for the DTL or something, but for the real-time OLAP query. We suggest users just directly use the uh, type DB because you know we have type flash. And again, we, we also give the uh, the presentation about um, yeah. the HTML. Yeah, let, let me let me quickly introduce him. Uh, he is uh, the principal product manager for type DB, and uh, he will talk about the real world HTML. <laughs> You will use single star type DS examples and they you will compare the architecture design differences between them. I think it'd be really fun to enjoy that. Thank you. Okay. First of all, first of all, does anybody need to go and take a Bible break? <laughs> I think that's a good idea. Yeah. So we'll be back probably for people online, we'll be back probably in about three minutes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah. cool. Yeah. I think uh, yeah. we should move. We got started, and uh, I will hand over Last to you. Right? And the uh, people got started. <laughs> well, hi, uh, hi, everybody. I see you explain to us. I'm Gim. I'm a product manager here at uh, Pinkcap. Um, thank you, Ed, very much for that very uh, insightful look into uh, IDB. I thought it would be very interesting for me to uh, give a uh, an alternative solution um, to look at another HTAP database like Single Store and see how they implement their HTAP, just as just to compare and contrast. Because their solution is actually very, very different from TIDB. And you'll see, uh, because of their architectural differences, uh, the, the pros and cons to the, the differences in the architecture. So um, I thought, uh, real briefly, you know, we'll go through, uh, you know, why HTAP's great uh, in popularity, brief history of single store, um, and then we'll see the architectural differences and the implications. Um, of, of those differences. So, um, why has HTAP grown in popularity in the past couple of years? I think, uh, uh, in fact, you'll see a lot of <clears throat> uh, these databases, uh, even traditional ones, well-established ones like Oracle, SQL Server, Satana, MariaDB, all adding col uh, columnar storage to their existing databases, right? And then you have H, uh, existing HTAP databases like Single Store, TidyB, Hyper, Coachella, 
uh, wildfire dragons, and then you get all these new entrants to each tab, right? Like LIDB from Google and um, Snowflake from Ministore. So you actually have all these new um, each tab entrance uh, databases coming on onto the market. So why? Um, there's a lot of reasons. Um, these are what just some of what I think are, are the reasons for you know, uh, heat checking popularity because, you know, um, our data sizes are growing so quickly, right? Um, the nature of services is changing. We get a lot more streaming data. Um, and uh, these streaming data really need to ingest millions of transactions per second. And you need to run analytical queries over, you know, billions or trillions of rows in real time, uh, over real time data that's coming in at the same time. And then the like uh, what Ed said, you know, really need to simplify the architecture, right? So um, I uh, before I launch into single store, I think it's good to really understand uh, a little bit of that their history. Um, they launched in April of 2013 uh, under a different name, MemSQL. MemSQL, uh, they call themselves MemSQL because it was a in-memory in database, in memory right. database right? Yeah. So um, it was optimized for in-memory row store. And then they quickly added a on-disk columnar-based uh, columnar -based storage. Uh, and then more recently, they decided to move away from uh, in-memory and, and uh, de-emphasize that in-memory, correct? And, and more emphasize on uh, both columnar and as well as HTAP use cases. And so they came up with this um, uh, new storage format called single store that can support both row as well as columnar. And they, therefore, they retained themselves single store. Yeah. So it looks like a snowflake kind of column change. Yes, <laughs> the uni store. Yeah, very, very interesting. Um, so, well, uh, Ed has already introduced you to the TidyB architecture. Basically, we have all these different nodes, the PD nodes, which store the metadata, TidyB nodes, which are the aggregators that uh, farm out the, the queries to the different uh, uh, nodes that store the data, like TidyKB and TidyFlash. And then they come back and re-aggregate all that data and return it back to the user, correct? In that regard, uh, single store is similar. They have an aggregator, uh, a master aggregator, and uh, they have other child aggregators too. And they also have beads, right, which actually store that data, but they don't distinguish between row or columnar leaves. Each leaf actually does both row as well as columnar. So um, this is where TidyB and uh, single store really differ. Uh, in how they uh, do their data storage and how they handle their data, right? Um, in TidyB, we have separate row and column stores, you know, in TidyB and TidyFlash, but uh, single store, they only have one type of leaf nodes and they do both row and column stores, which we'll see later. Uh, and our data files are in row format, correct? Uh, their data files are in the columnar format. Uh, we store three copies of data in three AZs for our high availability, like what Ed was saying. They actually store only two copies of uh, their data in two different AZs for our high availability. And uh, we use RAF algorithm, and spoke about RAF algorithm uh, a lot in his previous talk. Uh, they don't use RAF for, for replication, and we will see what the implication of that is, sorry. Um, again, Ed also mentioned that we use range partitioning. Uh, they actually use hash partitioning, which is a very interesting and very curious decision why they use hash partitioning. Um, and currently, we only do block storage, um, and they can do either block or blob storage. So, quick question the, you know, single store two copies of data above the cloud. Mm -hmm. Is that because they want to save money? Cheaper for various reasons. They really want speed, they want to save money. Uh, and yeah, but very good question. We'll see the implications of that. So uh, you'll see this that uh, Ed has talked about this, you know, 
uh, writing data in TiDB storage, you write it into a uh, primary store as primary region, and then the RAP algorithm will replicate it uh, across three other nodes for you. Uh, and also into the, uh, if you have a time flash node, it will replicate it there for you. Writing to single stories is a slightly more complicated. I, I hope I can get this right. Um, in the first step, when you start inserting memory in, uh, first of all, in uh, single story, they, they actually have two different types of storage, row store as well as columnar store, and both of them are in memory. Right? Uh, and the reason why they do that is because columnar store, as you guys know, when they do point reads or writes, it's extremely slow. Right? So to speed that up, they actually have to make use of an in-memory row store. So when they write, like for instance, write data into in-memory row store, uh, write memory uh, into single store, they first write into in their in-memory row store, correct? And every time they write, they'll append uh, uh, the data into a, an immutable log on their local disk. So, um, Once there is enough memory, in, uh, enough data in their row store, there's this uh, process that will automatically kick off and start to flush that data into their segment metadata, which is a columnar store. Uh, and then they'll delete all that uh, uh, data from the memory store, right? And then what they'll do is once this is created, they'll also create a data file uh, that is persistent into it. Um, and then if, so having you delete a data, uh, because they, uh, they do not, and to, to save time, they don't want to delete that data. They just write a bit map with, uh, to say, okay, this particular piece of data is deleted, right? So um, furthermore, how do they do their uh, architecture with separated storage, right? So, uh, once transactions are committed, um, uh, you know, they are written to the tail end of their log files and replicated to the other nodes for high availability. Uh, columnar store uh, data files and log files are uploaded to the S3 blob storage asynchronously. So uh, they do that because they don't want, because blob storage is a much slower operation. Uh, so they don't want that uh, that write to blob storage or S3 to be the bottleneck, right? And then uh, what they do is they take snapshots of the row store and write it directly to the blob store. And, and we'll see why they do that uh, later. Because, um, because once you have that snapshot in blob storage like S3, um, if they were to need to stand up another uh, node to expand their compute power, all they have to do is just read that snapshot from S3 and then recreate the log files to recreate uh, that particular additional lead node. Right? It's very quick to, uh, to add uh, 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 more compute. And then column store data files are pulled from blob store on demand and stored as needed in the data cache file. So uh, each lead node will only store those columnar files. Uh, in local storage for hot data. So they have this distinction between hot and cold data, right? So uh, what are the implications of this two very, very different ways of handling data and data storage? Um, well, I think most people will say, okay, we actually replicate, uh, for TiDB, we replicate our data twice, right? Because we have data stored in TiKB nodes, not only once, but three times. Plus, we also have data that's replicated in Thai Black, correct? So uh, our data is actually replicated at least four times. Uh, and then, uh, like you said, uh, the gentleman in the back said, you know, there is a replication latency uh, uh, between Thai KV and Thai Flash, right? Because Thai Flash is just a learner role, right? Um, so single store will say, oh, okay, no. Uh, our data store does not need to be replicated. So, uh, you know, but if you think about it, the only way to achieve the kind of speed that they need to achieve 
by using just uh, columnar store is that they have to create all these multiple indexes. Right? If they create all these multiple indexes, the amount of memory that they use, uh, the amount of storage that they use is also increased, right? So the question is, does it really save you that much more uh, storage space, right? Um, yeah. Uh, another implication is that um, they don't use RAF uh, consensus algorithm like uh, TidyB does, right? So as you know, the RAF algorithm uh, prevents uh, uh, or, or rather ensures cap theorem robustness and asset properties. If you don't have that, there's this uh, uh, thing in computer science called the split brain problem, right? If your network, for instance, uh, drops for one of the nodes, you could possibly have a group of uh, RAF learners be inconsistent with each other. Uh, and, uh, uh, or rather, if you don't have RAF algorithm uh, to maintain the consistency between your distributed systems, uh, you could have a split name problem, like uh, you know, single store will have, right? Potentially, whereas um, RAF actually prevents um, inconsistencies uh, in tidy. Uh, um, and then, like Ed mentioned earlier, um, you know, the data uh, there there is uh, separation uh, between. Uh, the compute, uh, there's isolation between the compute nodes of Thai KB and Thai flat, right? So uh, when there is a query, uh, you know, the stores are immediately available and used optimally to service the OLTP as well as OLAP queries. Whereas uh, because they are all shared in the leaf nodes in the single store, um, you know, uh, you, if you have a lot of queries, uh, oh, sorry. This one is talking about, yeah, if data is not in the mem uh, in, in the hot, if, sorry, if data is not uh, current in single stores uh, cache or in memory, then they actually have to go to long-term storage like S3 to pull that uh, cold data, which is kind of slow, right? So um, here, because we keep all the data as hot, the data is always available, whereas data sometimes may not be available in its local disk or cache or in memory. So single store actually has to go fetch that data from S3. And then uh, this talks about isolation because we have separate row store and column store. You know, um, uh, you know, if you have a lot of old OLAP queries, it's not going to affect your OLTP queries, right? Whereas you have uh, the issues of if you have a lot of analytical queries in, in single store, you may affect your OLTP performance. And then, um, like Ed mentioned also, um, TIDB uses range partitioning, uh, but single store curiously uses a uh, Hash partitioning to distribute their data partitions, right? Um, so uh, because we use range, we can use clustered index to do really quick scans of our data because all the data is all clustered together, right? Uh, whereas single store actually needs little extra indexes and actually may have to do uh, extra scans of the indexes and data uh, to retrieve consecutive rows of data. And then um, Yeah, so uh, in TIDB, um, if we want to scale uh, or store more data uh, and do horizontal scale up, we actually have to uh, create more Thai KB or Thai flash nodes, correct? Uh, because there's no separation of hot or cold data. Whereas single store, you can create a, uh, it's reading data uh, as and when it is needed from S3, correct? So you could have the smallest size uh, cluster or the biggest size cluster, um, but uh, it will just read that data from S3 as needed, right? E even if you have the smallest uh, single store nodes, it can still handle the amount of data you need. It's just that they don't have as much compute power as a larger single store cluster. So it may be, and the performance may be slower, that's all. 
but it's not tied to the number of leaves that they have. So uh, these are just some of the side-by-side -side comparisons of all the features um, uh, between Type B and Single Store, uh, where both Type B and Single Store are MySQL compatible. Uh, Type B is open source, but uh, there's no known. Uh, uh, we do not know uh, or any have any plans by Single Store to actually open source their uh, their uh, their code. Uh, Data architecture, we, both of them, as you've seen, uh, do row and column stores. Uh, and then for TidyB, we have both row and column stores and single store actually, their file format is actually most, uh, is, is actually column store only. And then uh, I think the biggest difference here between TidyB and single store is that for durable storage, we are only able to do uh, local or EPS storage, but single store can do local e uh, block storage as well as block storage. Uh, we cannot, uh, TidyB cannot handle hot cold storage, whereas uh, single store can. And um, uh, because of high availability, uh, it, the way TidyB handles high availability, we actually do three copies and three AZs. Um, but single store does two copies and two different agencies. Um, but here I want to add something about the hard code data separation. Um, I would say TidyB is not a hard node here because we do have some mechanism about the data placement. You can, uh, if you, 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 you can specify which table and which data is the code store, you can move to another table. Yeah. And actually, we do have plans um, in the future yes. uh, to actually be able to separate hot and cold data and be able to store data in a blob storage like S3. Right. So we do have that in our roadmap. Yeah. But uh, but the other thing I want to stress about high availability is because of the lack of uh, raft algorithm in single store, um, you may uh, you know have split brain issues where data is lost, right? So um, what does this mean, correct? In um, terms of, uh, yes. Oh, no, but can go back to that, uh, like the last time, right? So in case of the region uh, scanning, right? So if the region is, uh, you don't know the nature of the data, incoming data, you would end up uh, like a uh, hot spotting, right? Some regions are, are, you know, having more record than the other. So it's going to be imbalanced, right? Do you have that issue? No. Yeah. Because, yeah, because one, every, Region is approximately let's say megabytes, and second, the, uh, the the data placement will automatically balance the, the data across different nodes. Okay. Yeah. yeah, there will be no face the split. One of the region is too hot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, what does this mean for applicability in terms of use cases or scenarios? Right? I think uh, TIDB, uh because of its acid and strong uh, consistency um, it is uh, good for mission critical systems, uh, uh, systems of records. That's why you see type B being used in situations like online payment systems, e-commerce, logistics, operational analytics. Um, this does not mean that uh, single store is bad, correct? Single store has its application, correct? Um, like for instance, in, in extremely large data sets, uh, petabytes of data and where they can have a separation of hot and cold data, right? And um, they can be used in like IoT ad tech or operational analytics too, where, you know, if, if you have billions and billions of uh, events coming in from uh, billions of, of, of IoT devices, if you lose a couple, that doesn't matter, correct? It's not critical for you to monitor your overall system, right? So there are uses uh, that are very useful for uh, uh, single store to use. Um, as a discussion, I just threw it out there. We can or we don't have to discuss this. I mean, these are just some of my thoughts. Are there any other, uh, what other impacts do you guys see uh, because of these differences in architectures uh, and what are the pros and cons? Yeah. 